Hi everybody, so here we go. 10 things I wish I'd knew before I started modding Daisy community servers on, uh, well, console and PC, to be honest. Um, yeah, so there's probably gonna be a few more than 10, but that's, that's the ballpark figure. So first off, I'd have to say, when you start off modding, and you're thinking about getting a server um, to do modding so your friends or other people can come and play on it. You don't need a big server, honestly. Start off with a really small one, maximum of 10 players. You know, if you're on PC, even like a four player one. Um, you just you just don't need a big server. And then as you get more people coming into your server, then spend the money on the extra ones. But until then, save your money, just have a little server um, and, and save your cash. Uh, the next thing, a um, little bit out of order, is Notepad++. So when you're editing your XML files and your JSON files, which you will be doing an awful lot of, Notepad++ is a great text editor for that because it color codes stuff like you can see here. So it's much easier to see where you've made a mistake and to point it out pretty quickly. And kind of hand in hand with that, our XML validation sites like xmlvalidation.com don't worry I put links in the description below this video um, to all these things and JSON validation sites like json curious and curiousconcept.com so what these sites enable you to do is when you've been editing and you've saved your file you can then check it on using these tools to make sure there's no mistakes in it before you go live with it because the most common errors you will make are simple spelling mistakes or syntax mistakes. Say in this, they say in this little line here: event name equals quotation marks ambient hen quotation marks close angle bracket. You'll copy and paste something, and you'll miss off a little angle bracket like that, um, or you'll miss off a little quotation. Um, let's undo that. Um, something very very simple, um, and you won't see it. Honestly, you won't see it but by using XML validation or JSON validation. You may well pick those up. Kind of related to that, though, some of the um, files uh, from the Daisy XMLs um, kind are kind of broken to start off with. Um, um, that's to do with the way that Bohemia Interactive put uh, comments in. So when you um, add a comment to a uh, XML file, you kind of do it like this so you kind of do an arrow dash dash and then you write the comment and the sorry you do um when we're talking about you do arrow exclamation mark dash dash then what you want to write a couple of other dashes and then you put a closing uh, uh, angle bracket in like that so it, so it looks like that however on lots of those they have loads and loads of dashes which means that when you upload the file to an xml validator you'll say this is an error but sites like xmlvalidation.com, uh, uh, that they, they stop when they get to that error. So if you've made some mistakes after that, you won't see them. Now these errors, these comment errors, they don't stop the game working, but they stop you being able to validate properly. So I'll put a link in the description below this video to a video I've done on how you can fix that problem. Because once you get rid of that, it means you can then validate files like the CFG spawnable type of XML properly so you can spot mistakes next up when you're going to be doing some changes or plan first so always have like a change log list um, this is something that I wish I'd started doing straight away so you know write down what you want to do you know wh what do you want for your server you know do you want it to be a PVE server do you want it to be a PVP server do you want more weapons do you want less food do you want more bears do you want less wolves that's sort of just write that down like a mission statement if you like and then in order to achieve those things, write down what you physically got to do. You know, add more compasses, add more tinned food, take away some drinks, add more deer, add more bears, you know, add more M, uh, M4s. Every single one. And then just slowly work through them, ticking them off as you go. And the advantage of doing this is it, you, you know what you're meant to be doing, you know where you are, and it stops project creep as well when you start doing more things and more things and more things. And it gives you a finish line. So when you get there, you say, right, that's done. And then you can move on to something else. Next up, always have vanilla versions of the Bohemian Interactive, Daisy, Central Economy, XML, and JSON files. Always have them. Again, I'll put a link in the description below the video. So every time there's a new update and they publish them, download them and keep them pristine. So for example, on my computer here, what you can see 
is I have got on this computer Daisy 115 vanilla and Daisy 116 vanilla because you may well need them to revert your files to if you made a mistake but you need old files to compare to new files to see what changes have been made um, also if things get removed from the files as they uh, want to do but may still you may still work they may well be in the old file so always keep the old 115 116 114 113 vanilla keep them somewhere they don't take up much space so that you can refer back to them now especially you'll use them when it comes to um, comparing older files with new files so we mentioned notepad plus plus before um, if you download the notepad plus plus compare plugin very very powerful I wish I'd known about this is you can compare things like here we've got we're comparing the types file of um, that uh, 116 and this is 115 and by using the plugin if we scroll down you can see straight away so 115 is the old file on the right 116 is the new file on the left there's the alarm clocks see where they've been pasted in Bohemia Interactive so it makes it incredibly easy to see changes and then you can then add those changes into your own modded files so I wish I'd known about that because I used to spend hours doing this so notepad plus plus compare plugin uh, make sure you look at that local servers now I understand you know if, if you're just modding on console and you're doing this on an old laptop that can't run Daisy or maybe even on your phone or a, or a tablet you may not be able to install a local server but as soon as I installed a local server on my uh, Shadow Cloud gaming PC and was able to use it, it speeded up the whole process for me for modding not only on console but on PC as well because you can ch change things up. So what does that mean? So when you play Daisy, the server you're playing on is in the cloud. It's in a server rack somewhere, isn't it, in another part of the country or even another part of the world. And your console or your PC talks to that and they talk to each other and you, and you play Daisy. And if you're modding and you're modding on your... Um, Nitrado server for example you know you have to change the files you've got to upload them you've got to restart the server and you've got to check it out and it takes um, all takes time what you can do is if you own Daisy on PC if you go to the tool section of your Steam library you can download Daisy server and I've put a video in the description below this a link to the video in the description below this video and I've got one how to do it so you can install a local Daisy server that will run on your PC so when you fire up Daisy instead of connecting to the internet you can just collect, connect to the local version of DayZ that's running on your computer. Now you need to have a computer that can run DayZ to start off with, but you don't, you don't need to be able to run it at high resolution or high fidelity or anything like that because you're just using it to test stuff. And it is incredibly quick to apply changes, whether that be XML, JSON, or Steam Workshop mod files to a local server. So you can then see if it works, you can jump in, you can use admin tools, things like um, Zombery or whatever you like, so you can fly around the server and check things out. So things aren't working wipe it restart in a matter of seconds instead of like you know 10 20 minutes if you're trying to work with a with a remote server so local server absolutely fantastic definitely worth doing now when you are fiddling with the central economy and changing the loot always bear in mind that any changes you make will often take a long time to take into to, to come into effect especially when it comes to loot changes I'm talking about say you're increasing the number of weapons say you're adding in um, say some more m4s um, or and, you, and you're taking them away from like the just the toxic zones but you're spreading them across the across the map what you have to remember is Daisy is so huge and there's so many different places for things to spawn in if you went from like I mean, I'm just making this, but let's say the AK-47U had 10 possible spawns, all right? So it's quite a rare thing. It's probably more, but let's say it had 10. Let's say on your server you, you change that to um, 30, all right? Now, that's a big change. You shouldn't really change things more than that, but let's say you went to 30. That gun would still be incredibly difficult to find because there's still only 30 of them <laughs> spread over this huge map. Also... The way that um, servers work with Daisy is when somebody, when the last person logs off the server, the server stops working. So it stops despawning things and respawning stuff. So it takes longer for new things to arrive. So what you can do is you can go into your globals.xml and you can edit your idle mode um, 
out of mode countdown uh, figure you can make that longer so the server when someone logs off the service keeps work working and keeps churning over that loot so your new stuff will, will then appear so be patient when you make changes to especially your types that xml and your cfg spawnable types that xml you know, say you add um, silencers to all the guns it's gonna take a while on an existing server for all of those changes to take effect so just be patient. Don't expect things to, to change straight away. And in fact, the most important things that I test when I'm doing things like this is when I've made a change, often it's too difficult to find a specific thing. But what you do when you go in and you test your server, you're looking to say, right, are zombies spawning in? Do zombies have items on them? Are Is loot spawning in? Is it damaged? Is it not damaged? Uh, are weapons spawning in? Do they have attachments to them? If you go and find a vehicle, does it have the odd wheel or something? Because you know there's problems when no zombies are spawning in and when, um, for example, vehicles have no bits on them at all, you know there's a problem. But there we go. So be patient and work uh, work, um, work slowly. And I guess, you know, you're looking at the daisy, you know, problem that people have when they start is is the loot. You know, the central loot economy in Daisy is an incredibly complex and a work, it is a work of art. But don't expect... Um, to do massive massive changes and for it to work all right so change small things so try not to more than triple so especially with guns you know don't go from five m4a ones to 500 m4a ones go from five to maybe 30 you know just just do small amounts and those small amounts across a number of different weapons will make a big big difference to people being able to find them and they will find them and then you'll also keep the idea of you know daisy being what it is and you'll stop your server working if you add too many things into your daisy server um you'll find that the, the, the whole system will stop working and you'll be chasing your trial try, trying to uh, figure it out so that's probably something i wish i'd learned straight away you know little changes can make a big difference but you have to be patient about them now this is a this is a really important thing that I think maybe you should even have as a plaque above the place where you do your modding uh, for Daisy, and that is it is okay to walk away from something if it's not working. If you can't get something to work, it's fine to stop, and that may well be an XML mod or a JSON mod, or in this case, say say with something like Daisy expansion, a Steam Workshop mod. So, for example, with me, I remember early on I wasted whole days trying to perfect the um, art of spawning in items in custom locations using events and lots of times it wouldn't work and I couldn't figure out why it wouldn't work and probably what one of the the, the biggest reasons for that was um, uh, the location of where I was trying to spawn something in can be finicky say with daisy expansion daisy expansion i'm not quite sure what it's like now but i've tried a couple of times in the last year or so to get it to work and i find it very fiddly to get it to work but after after you've been trying for a few hours and you've checked the discord and things like that and, and the help files and all that sort of stuff if it doesn't work it's okay to go actually i can't get this to work i'm gonna go do go going to go and do something else instead um and you just walk away this is meant to be fun and if it's not fun um, you know stop and do something else kind of related to that as well is the logic of the language in the xml files um, so for example here's an event about an, a hen the hens that, that spawn in and you'll read through these and you'll start to understand certain things like nominal okay three maximum 50 and what the, the child should be so what should spawn in for this event but just because you think you understand what it means doesn't mean that it'll always work that way. Um, for example, animal bear. Here's a good one. Animal bear. Nominal zero. What? So no bears are meant to spawn in. But we know bears spawn in. What's going on? So how do, that doesn't seem logical. Okay, cows. Okay, seven. Yeah, okay, that's probably right. Two and three, but that's less than seven. What does that? Why is that like that? Deers is the same. So what I'm saying is that it doesn't always at first glance seem to be logical lots of this stuff. And the reason for that is you don't fully understand why. So in this case, it's to do with the fact that the way that Daisy treats these different events with the, um, 
means that the files look at these figures and treat them in, in different different ways because there's other files that also control these events in terms of um, where these animals are, are grazing and things like that so for example with the the hen the hen event is actually an ambient event whereas the bear event is actually an animal event and then you get static events so don't worry if you look at something and you think well this isn't logical why is the syntax like this if it, it, you know it, it's okay to to not understand and just follow other people's videos <laughs> and then at some point something will click and, and that will help and i guess you know the final hint i will give you which is a really big one is to join balshad's coding discord i'll put a link in the description below this video uh, Balshad has put together some amazing tutorials um, and it is a fantastic reference. There's so much to modding in DayZ, whether that be console or PC, um, that it's, it's impossible to remember everything. And I come back here and I look through um, his references and I go, oh, right, okay, so that's why isn't that, that's why that's not working. You know, that's what I should be doing. And it is an amazing uh, resource, Balshad's Discord. So for PC modders and console server so, models. So make sure you join his Discord. Say hello. Say I sent you. And when you want to do learn how to do something, just have a look through. And I'm sure you'll probably find exactly what, what you want to do. Right, so there we go. Hopefully you find this video useful. All of these things, if I'd known them before I'd started modding, I'm sure I would have... Uh, been a lot further along than I am now and but hopefully by you looking at these and learning from these it will help you too there we go so if you enjoyed the video hit like if you want to see more the same press subscribe and I will of course see you again soon